Hello everyone, V the Amazing Greek here. If my suffering is your entertainment, prepare to be blown away. Today, I'm going to start on uh, changing the head gasket on the Dodge Neon 2001. Uh, I'm going to give you some background history, uh, what I've been dealing with so you know how I got to this point. Uh, one day I was driving, my car started to overheat. Uh, I got home, checked, I had coolant, but at the time, my sensor that tells you that your oil is getting low, somehow that quit working, so my oil, I have a little oil leak, um, and uh, it got too low, and it just, the engine got hot. So, I refilled the oil, uh, put coolant, topped off, make sure everything's okay. Um... Then I notice I start overheating. Uh, just going to work in the mornings, I drive about four o'clock in the morning, I don't have the problem. Coming home, afternoon, the road heat and all that, it starts overheating by the time I get home, which is a 44 minute drive, most of it on highway. It's 33 miles or so. So, overheating, I'm overheating, so I change my thermostat and I flush the coolant because I noticed uh, one time when it bubbled over from the uh, coolant reservoir, it was very orangey and dirty. So I looked in, my cap for my uh, radiator had a lot of gunk. It was almost like a fine mud. So as I was taking, I changed the thermostat um, and seeing all that mud, I flushed the system. I drained the coolant. I took, a, I don't want to say flush, I, I washed all of it out, I didn't use chemicals to flush it. Uh, ran a water hose, got as much of the coolant out as I could, uh, refilled it, and thought, okay, I should be good. I keep overheating. Uh, got me another radiator cap, thinking I couldn't, uh, maybe it was stuck, gummed up, wouldn't release. Um, that didn't fix it. I would start to hear... Uh, gurgling or what they call a burping of the uh, coolant system when I would stop uh, at a light or once I had been going for a while about my 30 miles or so I get at a light and the engines reading hot and I can hear it when you stop the car is you can hear it and uh, it's shaking the reservoir back here is shaking and it's spitting out coolant and uh, so I was like, what the crap? So I got me a pump, thinking I wasn't pumping. I was also getting some hesitation. When you push the gas, it felt like I was towing a big boat or something behind me. And uh, so I thought, okay, the pump must be locked up or something, and the, the belt's fighting to uh, turn, fighting that pump. Maybe that's it. So I changed the water pump and the timing belt. I didn't get to film that, but we're going to get into it today. We have to get into that again, so I'll show you uh, where these parts are and all that. Uh, so as the gurgling I researched on the internet, you could have a air bubble in your cooling system. That's a bad thing. Uh, you can compress liquids and things. No, you can compress gases, you can't compress liquids. So with that air bubble in there, if it gets stuck like in a P-trap area or something like that in the engine, I don't have a diagram of how it flows. Um, you get that air bubble in there and the coolant's trying to fight around it, you know, it can cause that gurgling and bubbling uh, like a witch's cauldron is what it sounds like and what it looks like. So I changed that. When I pulled the pump out, it was, it had some very, uh, very tight, so I thought, okay, that should do it. I drove um, one day after I got the gurgling air bubble out. Uh, I have to tilt the engine up so that the when you take the cap off your radiator, it's the highest point of the cooling system. You let it run for a while. One person said on the bottom, squeeze your radiator hose and uh, help the bubble get out. So I left the cap off, I ran the system, bubbles started coming out. And I was like, great, great. Ran for a while, I ran around town a little bit, did great. One day, it drove awesome. I was like, hell yeah, I got it. Next day, drove to work on the way home. Loss of power, uh, had no give when I gave it gas, it wouldn't take off, it overheated, and uh, 
it overheated three quarters of the way, never to the hot. So I pull into the gas station, I'm listening to it, and I don't hear gurgling, so maybe it was just getting warm, maybe I need more coolant, something. I pull my card out of my wallet, stick it in the machine to get gas, and I hear a boom in my radiator. The top of it splits open, coolant goes everywhere. Um, so, I started asking some questions at the autos, auto places, did some research on the internet. Dodge Neons, for some reason, are notorious for having bad head gaskets. I've read some stories, people drive 6,000 miles with a brand new one, had to take it in, get it fixed. Uh, they recommend you change it at, I think it was a hundred and something thousand miles. Timing belt, they say a hundred and five thousand miles. Um, so I got me a gasket set, going to change everything that's in there. Uh, one of the other signs that cool, and I thought busted oil uh, head gasket, you should get coolant going into your oil. So you pull out your oil stick and it should look milky, you know, like coffee with milk and cream in it. I didn't see that. So I thought, no, it's not the head gasket. Well, when I pulled the spark plugs, I've also changed my spark plugs and my wires uh, because with that loss of power, I thought, oh, my, my plugs are gone. And they were. The, the nub was gone. It was just a little pin. But they were very, very clean. They looked like they had just simply been heated up and uh, never came back to their normal colors, what they look like. And I found out from one of the guys, uh, O'Reilly, he told me that if your plugs, you pull them out and they're not dirty, they look nice and clean, you're burning coolant. And I said, okay, that makes sense. So my shit's going the other way. It's not seeping out. I'm seeping into there. So that's where we're at. I bought a new radiator. We're going to do that on this video. Uh, we're going to do the head gasket and everything that's involved with that. I'm not going to show you a lot of wrench turning. What I am going to show is the components. I want to. Sh uh, I'll give you the bolts. You know the the size of them. Almost everything I'm dealing with here is metric. Uh, uh, I'll say this component. Anything needs uh, to wiggle and this and that. And I'll run you through the steps. Uh, otherwise, it'd be a three-hour video. You know, but uh, so and I'll show you where the timing belt. All the things got to be done with that. It is a lot of work. So uh, I'm going to jump on it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative battery cable and then I'm going to jack up the car and I'm going to take off the tire. I will show where I put the jack because I had a couple people say, hey, where do you jack the car up at, you know? And uh, I, I had to have the Chilton's book to find where the hell you're supposed to do it. But uh, we'll do that uh, and then uh, we'll get into everything. This is a 10 millimeter you use. For the battery, I know that one because I've done it a lot. 10 millimeter wrench will take that off. I'll put it back. Then we'll come around and we'll jack up the car and take off the tire and uh, we'll hit it from there. Okay, so we're on the passenger side of the vehicle. This is the side we're going to have to work from. There's the tire. All right, now let's see what you can see here. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay. My light will stay right here. Now, there's your tire right there. Where's my finger? There it is. Okay, so here's the beginning, the end of the well here. See? You come back, and if you feel along this back wall, see? Do you see this? In this piece sticking down here there's two nubs right here they stick down and right here and then between them is this cutout you want to put your jack this car comes with a scissor type jack like this this is 19 millimeters it is the same size as your lug nuts this tool here it's got the swivel head so that you can, uh, it acts like a breaker bar. You use it to take your lugs off of your tires and you use it to spin this. Now, this part right here goes between, there's our nub and our nub. So 
we'll do it by hand at first get that up so that it gets close I cannot put a floor jack here if I put my floor jack it hits too high that's how low this car sits which was a good thing because I need the floor jack when uh, we get into actually doing engine work we're gonna have to jack the engine up all right so let's set that right in that groove I'm gonna center it up okay. all right now you can use that tool if you want it will take forever or take a 19 millimeter socket and a ratchet and that's quicker or you can take a drill and you have the adapter drill bit uh, the receiving end and uh, this is 3 8 drive or half inch whatever you're using put this on here and do that now I forgot to say engage your emergency brake and put a chock block bricks something behind the rear tires you do not you're going to be lifting the engine lowering the engine lifting you're going to be inside that wheel well right there wheel off and you're going to be pulling and tugging on that engine okay so you're going to have you know jack stands all that under here be safe i i never stick my legs up under there because i'm not quick enough to get them out oh you know i'd rather be uncomfortable and have my legs if an accident happens so when you do this with a drill variable speed do not just and you know don't do that something could happen you get hurt so go slow lift it up and then we'll put some jack stands under that and i'll show you where i'm going to put the jack stands um once i get the car up and uh if you've never done this before before you start to jack up the car break the lug nuts on your wheel just break them loose then jack up the car and uh, then take them off the rest of the way. You don't want to just take them all off. You know, you could damage your threads, something like that, if something shifts. So uh, we're going to do that part. I'm jacking it up. Then I'm going to show you where I put the jack stands. Right. Let's see, let's see what I'm doing here. That's how we do it slow and easy all right so we got the wheel off I'm trying to find where I'm gonna put the jack stand there's the uh, shit rotor come over now big bolt right here smaller bolt right there I'm gonna put this by the big one right there it's behind it I'm gonna have to go up a little bit so that my jack stand will fit go up okay I got us close go up just a little bit more just shy of getting under it That's good right there. I'll get it so. Let me see if I can twist this a little bit. Get into some places. Some, there we go. Let's see. All right. See how we've got it positioned. Let me get the light here so you can see. So we've got it sitting between those two bolts on the metal part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the car down just a little bit so it sits on the jack stand. That way if it does something shifts, I'm not shifting and dropping, you know, a half inch there. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm sitting on the jack stand. And then I'll keep the jack, actually, uh, I'll put tension on the jack also. That way I have two supports, not just one. 
right, that wasn't a good spot because the metal over there, it doesn't recess as much as I thought. So it's only hanging on one lip of the jack stand. So I'm going to go ahead. Dang it. I'm getting these tight spots. I got to go up some more. I'm going to do like I did last time. I'm going to set that small bolt right in the center. There's a little groove in the jack stand. It's got that little dip. So I'm going to put the, the bolt right in the middle there. And then lower it down. There we go. Like that. You can see from that sitting on that bolt middle of the jack stand. That other way wasn't any good. <laughs> 